Hi there, this is Sean, the Honest Book Reviewer, with another book review. In this video, we're discussing How to Be Eaten, written by Maria Elderman. I really enjoyed this book. It's a dark comedy. It's also very tongue-in-cheek in many sections. The humour is very, very clever in this story, and the characters are so clever as well. The characters are written so well, and I love the fact that every character in this book has a unique voice. That's one of the highlights in this book for me, and it makes me so happy when books have characters with unique voices. It's a debut book by the author, but it just feels so clever, so well written and constructed. It feels so well thought out and planned. So much about this book just deserves the highest praises, and it makes me really anxious to see what this author brings out in the future. I would like to read every book this author writes, just from this one book, this book is just written so well. When you read this story, you'll find that the author's tying in different myths, fairy tales, legends into the story through the main characters. Each main character is tied to a different fairy tale, myth, or legend. And they're tied in a way that's very clever, and it ties them into the modern day. And I just found it fascinating the way the author just crafted these myths and fairy tales in a modern day setting but changed them around so much as well and made them very unique. Five women are asked to join a support group. And they're asked to join the support group through a mysterious email they receive and they all think it's spam. Then they receive messages again and again and again. And finally, they all decide, oh, what the hell, I'll just accept and come along and join this mysterious group I know nothing about. So that was a very modern, I guess, way to start the book, because we all get spam, don't we? We all get messages that just seem a bit odd, and we we think they're spam, and sometimes they are, or most of the time they probably are, and then sometimes those messages may not be spam. We think they are. We're trained now. We're trained as a society, as a culture, to treat anything mysterious received by email as spam. But they go along to the support group, and the reason they're there is because they're all survivors. They all survived something that was terrible. But the other reason they're there is because although they survived, their stories aren't always believed. And their truths, the stories that they own, the truth they own of themselves, isn't believed and it's misinterpreted or misunderstood by the public. And misunderstood in many, many awful ways. I mean, they're vilified sometimes by the public, these five women. But they're trying to hold to their truth even though what happened to them changed them in sometimes very negative ways, destroyed their lives basically with some of the characters, but they're trying to get by, they're trying to hold on to their truth, but they haven't had a means to tell their truths before, tell their whole story. So the person who's running, running this group called Will, he is giving them a way to voice their story, just to the group. Voice the story about what happened to them, who they are, and sometimes how it changed them. And this book is structured in a way that each week, so we have chapters that are based on a week, and each week one of the women in the group tells their story. And there's also a bit of banter between the women in the group and Will sometimes when one of the women are telling their story. And that banter can be quite humorous in many parts and brings out the other characters' personalities a lot in this story. And during that banter, just the way they're speaking to each other, their dialogue, and sometimes their thoughts, is so good and so unique for each character in this story. You just feel like you get to know each person in this group so well. As each story unfolds, I was just so glad that we're getting different voices. So for every chapter where we're getting told a story from one of these women by the woman who lived that experience, the voice they were telling it in, the voice we're reading, is unique to that character. And it feels like that character and I love that in a story. I love the way an author can just make us think that we're listening or we're reading the thoughts of that character at that time. I don't think all authors can do that very well, but this author has done it perfectly in my opinion. It's a really stunning way the author's written this book. This book also touches on some themes. So one of the themes is celebrity. So it looks at celebrity and looks at celebrity in the modern day. What does it mean in modern times? And that's told through one of the stories that the characters tell in this book. I like the way the author deals with that in this story. We have the cult of celebrity, and we know that celebrity 
isn't always true. What we see isn't always true. But so many people believe what they see in the media, you know, when they watch something or read something. And it's not always true. It's edited a lot. And just to see the author describe that, the editing versus the reality, you, you get that impression in this book that it happens very much. And I'm pretty sure it does. The other theme the author explores is just stories, histories, and not just the histories of the people in this book, or histories of famous people or infamous people, but the histories of us all, really. Our own history, the stories that make us who we are, and how sometimes they can be misunderstood by people, and how sometimes not everybody has the power to voice the truth of who they are. So they have to live with what people think of them. So that's a powerful message in this story as well. So while we're sitting through these sessions and we're hearing the stories from the women, we're also asked to wonder about the person running the group, Will. What's his real purpose for running the group? What's his motive? What's he get out of it? We're asked to ponder those questions through little snippets we see through the book about who he is, what he's up to. And there's a twist at the end that's quite thrilling, quite stunning, quite shocking, and very surprising. So wait for that twist at the end because you'll just love the twist. If you want to read this book, I really recommend reading this, by the way. This book is really good. And wait till that twist at the end and how that's dealt with at the end as well. It's a very powerful moment in the story. So Ashley is one of the women in the group. And her story is one that I think younger generations will relate to the most. It's a story basically based on Cinderella. So Ashley is a young woman who wants fame, and she wants fame by any means necessary. And the chosen vehicle for her is a reality TV program, kind of based on something like The Bachelor. So she was a contestant on the show, and it's all about her time spent on that show when she tells that story about certain moments in the story. And then about her life afterwards, we get a snippet of what it's like after that show. You can really empathize with Ashley in this book. She's a very trusting person, naive in some ways as well. But it's that trust that gets her into trouble. It's her downfall, basically. She takes people at face value and wears her heart on her sleeve. She hadn't learned to create, you know, a poker face, basically, for people around her at times. She was very honest, very sincere about everything, overly so. And we get that through her story, her Cinderella story. It's a very powerful story, I think, and one of the most powerful stories in this book. Bernice is the first woman to tell her story in this book. She's quiet and shy, a little bit naive as well, but she wants to be known. She wants someone to look at her and, and know her, to look at her and say, I want to get to know you. I want to be with you. That's what she wants in her life. And that becomes her downfall. She falls victim to a rich and powerful person, and he calls himself Bluebeard. So this is the tie-in to the story of Bluebeard. And we learn a lot about Bluebeard in this story. I won't go into what we learn, but we learn how he manipulates Bernice in the book. We learn about struggles between people who are powerful and not powerful. We learn how powerful people can control people who have no power, and what it means if you're in a relationship and you have no power as well. That's told in her story. Her character is quite powerful as well. After her experience with Bluebeard, she's living with the aftermaths of that. And she chooses to live with some of those things as well. She can pull herself out of that if she wants to, but she chooses not to. And she has reasons for that, which I won't go into. But they make sense, those reasons, when you know the character. But I do like Bernice as a character. I like the fact that She's still strong, she is struggling, and you feel like things are getting to her and they're getting too much for her, but you see this strength underneath. You really do see a strength underneath in Bernice and it's waiting for that to come out. Ruby is a powerful character in this book. She's probably the woman in this book who most wears her truth, I and mean, she literally wears her truth, basically. She wears the result, the aftermath of the big event, the shocking event in her life. And I won't go into what that is in her story, but she is related to the Little Red Riding Hood fairy tale. So to get people to understand her, to know her truth and learn her truth, she makes herself kind of a victim in ways as well and vulnerable. 
So it's very complex, this character. And I don't know if we look at the character, if she's that self-aware of what she's doing. She seems to be in some cases. Then in some cases, she just seems to be surprised if people think certain things of her. So it's a very strange character in the book, but a very powerful character. I really enjoyed this book. I enjoyed it so much. It's a fantastic book. The characters are so engaging and gripping. The whole story and concept is really engaging and really well told. It just seems so well structured and well thought out. And for a debut book, it's amazing. I rate this a 5 out of 5. I would read any book this author wrote in the future, and I'm hoping she writes many books. I just think this book is quite stunning. On my channel, I do review quite a few fantasy books. If you like fantasy books, check out my channel and subscribe. Also, there's a fantasy playlist on my channel. It should be on your screen now.